A new national study aims to uncover the prevalence of food allergies among Singapore children. It will also evaluate the impact of allergies on society. The findings could help parents and healthcare professionals better manage the situation. The study involves over 2,000 children and is led by clinicians and researchers from five local healthcare institutions. Sabrina Ng reports. Ms. Islin Ismail tried weaning her three-month-old son Hayden of breast milk in 2012. But her child developed alarming symptoms. After drinking a bottle of formula milk, his face and body turned red and swelled. Ms. Islin rushed her son to the hospital, where Hayden was diagnosed with allergies to milk, eggs and peanuts. The event shocked the family because none of Hayden's parents nor siblings had any known food allergies. It's challenging, so every time when we go out, we have to take extra precaution. EpiPen, check EpiPen, check this, check that. So especially when you have to go for weddings or birthday parties, we have to feed him first. The National University Hospital and KK Women's and Children's Hospital say such cases have increased over the past few years. Both hospitals have reported a spike of up to 60% in the number of food allergy tests performed in the last three years. Currently, there is no formal data tracking childhood food allergies in Singapore. Some common allergens include peanuts for young children and shellfish for teens and young adults. One doctor says this rise could be due to changing diets. We've got uh, very much, uh, you know, westernized food uh, diet uh, into our regime itself. So when once you're exposed to a different set of, uh, you know, alert, uh, sort of food particles, the um, the genetic composition itself will actually start showing up as well, and the allergic composition as well. For Miss Islin, her son's allergies mean food prepared at home is often the safest option. Throughout his childhood, Hayden had gone through multiple allergic reactions, including two near-fatal ones, because of accidental ingestion or cross-contamination from allergens. Ms. Islin says there is a lack of understanding of allergies in Singapore. This is the gap the joint study is trying to plug. Researchers hope the findings will help improve future guidelines around nutrition and mental health support for affected families. The first phase of the study kicked off in February. As of mid-June, over 500 parents have participated. They were given a questionnaire during their child's routine developmental checkup. This finds out information such as their child's medical history and reactions to certain foods. Those found to have a potential allergy were also referred to KKH or NUH for further evaluation. The next phase of the study in July will involve around 400 children aged up to 18 years old with diagnosed allergies. 